Hi, this is Michael Wojak with a Rochester City Council update for July 7th, 2014. July 7th. It seems like there should be something I should know about that date. I do remember four years ago, that's when the City Council stood up for equality and passed the, uh, the uh, Domestic Partner Registry. We were ahead of our time, I guess, at that point, and proven to be correct in every regard. But that's not it. There's something else on about this date. I'll have to see if I can come up with it later. Mm. City Council meetings today, um, we just discussed panhandling and the Mayo Civic Center expansion. Mayo Civic Center expansion, I mean, is what it is. It's not perfect. It doesn't address all the shortcomings of the facility. It doesn't engage the river on the east side the way that I wish it did. Um, but there's a lot of improvements. There are a lot of good things for the community to be excited about. And, um, you know, the, this thing was cast some um, eight years ago, and I think we've done about as, the best we can with it. And I think the community is going to be pretty proud of it when we're, uh, when we're done with that facility. The panhandling stuff, you know, the big thing is, is um, I, I keep bringing this, bringing up the idea that if I go up and, um, you know, if I go to talk to somebody who's sitting on a public sidewalk and um, ask them, may I please have a dollar? They tell me no. I say, okay, thank you. Have a, have a great day. According to our ordinance, I am guilty of the crime of aggressive panhandling. And anybody with any common sense realizes that that is not aggressive. Now it was brought up, well, that you know maybe some people are going to take that as aggressive. They might be intimidated by it, but um, that just because they're intimidated by something like that does not make the does not make it aggressive. The example I gave: we have a blogger here in this community, and every time she sees a black person, she is intimidated. That does not make being black a crime, however. Um, so um, I, I did ask the ordinance is going and the attorney is going to go to the Human Rights Commission, and we're looking forward to them to weigh in. Um, I will support things that address actual problems that we have in the community. I will do, take actions to address things where we have data that shows that things are unsafe. However, for the sake of um, kicking people when they're down, I'm not interested in supporting any particular ordinance that does that. And in terms of violating people's First Amendment uh, free speech rights, I'm not interested in doing that either. Moving ahead to the dinner meeting, we had a uh, meeting with Roger Friederson. He gave us kind of an update, some background on the intelligent-led policing. One of the things that's kind of spectacular is that um, of our offenders in the community, about 6% of them were responsible for about 60% of our crime incidents. We call them frequent flyers, I guess. I don't know if they have a punch card or something like that. But now um, with the analytics, and we know that about 70% um, about of them are now in jail. And that has had a measurable effect of decreasing the crime rate in the city of Rochester. So there is some power to this analytic stuff. There's also a lot of concerns um, in terms of how we handle the data. And um, while I was concerned going forward, I am less concerned with the ability to have an oversight board in there to ensure that the data is being used properly. And um, I think that that's going to be able to help us out um, quite, a, quite a bit. Um, I know it's not going to alleviate, alleviate everyone's concerns, but in particular, some of the things I heard about this is aimed at targeting juveniles. This is aimed at um, painting people with a broad brush. I actually believe it's going to do just the opposite. Um, I believe that it's going to use hard data instead of um, things that are subject to biases. We know that our um, criminal justice system um, is not blind to race. We know that if you're arrested for the same crime, your outcome is going to be different whether you're black or you're white. Um, Data, however, the hard data does not necessarily subject to those same biases, and I think that that's something that's a very positive thing going forward, where we can actually look at real numbers and um, you know determine uh, probabilities and likelihoods and um, make, keep the community safer, keep the police officers safer. At the same time, anytime that data is used, we want some independent oversight with the power to quell any potential abuses being done. And I hope that some of the people who are the strongest qu critics of the analytics are the people who are willing to serve on that committee of oversight. Um, moving on to the council meeting, I um, had the uh, pleasure of being heckled at the meeting tonight for having the audacity to support putting um, affordable housing into an um, area where they um, apparently lower income people were not welcome. Um, Apparently, these people are not aware of the fact that we can discriminate on where people live on the basis of their income, but um, we'll try and get them the memo next time. There was a little bit of a concern over notifications. Um, I seen the notification area. I thought the notification area was just fine. The notices went out. We have the list of all the people that were notified. I think the thing is people get these postcards in the mail. They don't even look at them. They just throw them away because they don't look like much, and I was never contacted. Um, you know, we sent out, um, you know, a 900-foot radius got notices, so... 
And all the people were there, and despite not having any notices, they seem all, all had made up their mind at that point anyway. So we had our public hearing, and we closed the public hearing. And because of some of the concerns, we did table it for two weeks. However, it's going to come back, and my expectation is the zoning change and the general development plan will probably pass um, when it comes back to the city council. There were just no concerns brought up in the public hearing that speaks to um, the kind of things that we consider in making a zone change like this. There was a few of the people, they don't want lower income people in the neighborhood. There were a few people that didn't want, um, didn't want the, uh, oh, more traffic in the neighborhood. Um, there were um, people who believed that this project was going to bring crime to the neighborhood. All of these things are, you know, pretty well patently false, but um, we don't let facts get in the way of a good argument. Um, what's there right now is B4 zoning. We're changing to an R3. So the fact is that's going to generate less trips than a B4 typically would. It has a lower height than what a B4 typically would. The densities are the exact same. And oh, by the way, we go from 10% requirement for landscaping to a 38% requirement for landscaping. You get a much better development with an R3. Um, you know, there were some questions about a buffer. There's a bigger buffer between this and the industrial site than where we did Cascade Creek with an industrial site on the other side of Civic Center Drive. And that's been one of the most successful projects in the history of Rochester. And oh, by the way, that project helped lift up the neighborhood and it helped to um, greatly improve that neighborhood. It did not deteriorate home values. Now, apparently, they contacted a number of realtors and there were a number of realtors spewing this garbage that somehow this project was going to lower their property values, which is absolutely fascinating from the standpoint that first of all, it's total BS. Um, and second of all, would a realtor would actually say something like that when that's clearly not the position of the National Association of Realtors or any actual data that's out there. The only correlation that you can really show in terms of affordable housing is when you have large, large tracts of um, incredibly densely populated um, low-income populations, but it's nothing like this. This is sticking a, a single apartment building out in an otherwise um, uh, you know, moderate income neighborhood. And um, so anyways, as soon as I heard this, I did ask the people to name the name of the realtors who were saying that this would hurt their property values. And um, well, we're going to have to, um, and I'm going to verify, there were five of them, and I'm going to check with all five of them and see what they said, because I think it's a pretty uh, gross abuse of, um, you know, their profession to be making some of those ridiculous statements like that. So very disappointed in um, them, if in fact it's true, and if it is true, of course, I'll um, name names and write about it. Um, lastly, we did, um, we'd also approve the Girard project, the TIF for that, which is a wonderful project. Um, another 90 units with um, 18 units of affordable housing. So between these two potential projects, that's 67 units of affordable housing. And as I mentioned, I got heckled a little bit. And part of the reason why I got heckled is because somebody um, decided that I owned a construction company, which is hilarious because um, I, in fact, do not own a um, construction company, but that did not stop him from heckling. So I was really irritated and, you know, with that. And, um, you know, you give, your, you give thanklessly of your time sometimes and you take this kind of abuse and crap and this guy was just completely off his rocker and um, you know and basically what happened is um, rather than you know blowing up at him on the spot just you know let's take a five minute recess so I just walked out went to cool down and he was going to approach me in the hall too and he was going to keep lobbing the same crap at me and you know finally just you know had, had to had to tell him off and just get away from him came back fortunately he was gone I'm glad he was gone um, you know, I'm sure he's, um, you know, if I received a couple notes, his uh, tail is tucked firmly between his leg now when he figured out that he was full of crap. Um, you know, I, I believe in doing good projects. I believe in serving people that are in need. And, um, you know, that's that's a lot of abuse. And what would I have liked to have been doing tonight? Well, actually, that July 7th that I told you about, that would be my uh, wedding anniversary. It's my 13th wedding anniversary. And, um, or... If you were reading my campaign materials from a couple years ago, my 15th wedding anniversary, but um, I don't think that was right. Um, you know, and actually I never even saw my wife today because I was involved in um, city council meetings um, um, every minute that she was um, done with work. So instead of um, spending some time with my wife on my anniversary, I got to be heckled by this Yahoo. So um, hope he feels good about himself. Um, you know, ultimately, I feel pretty good about myself because um, we're talking about putting 67 families, working families, um, families in need into um, affordable housing in the city of Rochester. That's how we serve our people. That's how we build a strong community. And the project that we're going to do is going to have no negative effects for that neighborhood whatsoever. Um, if they really want to address some of the issues out there, I suggest they get a shovel and plant some trees, maybe park some cars on the roadway to slow down the traffic a little bit. But uh, 
don't don't go around saying that these lower income people don't belong in your neighborhood because that's total BS and I'm not going to stand for it. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.